now joining us, his entire family, baseball superstars. Dante Bichette Jr. joins us right now. Dante, welcome to the Zach Gilb Show. Thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Hey, man, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the season uh, in a little bit. But so far, when you were growing up as a kid, your dad was a multiple-time All-Star in 1995, led the MLB at the National League in home runs. What was it like growing up as a kid and having a dad as a baseball player? You know, uh, just really positives from it. You get to uh, learn through his experiences. He gets to teach you, you know, everything that he knows. And um, he continued to learn. He was a real student of the game, so he continued to learn and pass on as he went. And uh, got some great memories from being around the, the fields and the clubhouses as well. So, obviously, your dad was a baseball player. And maybe at a young age you knew, hey, I wanted to be a baseball player. But I was, like I was telling Reese Hoskins, heck, I wanted to be a baseball player growing up. But then I knew I couldn't hit a 60-mile-an-hour, 65-mile-an-hour slider, so things just weren't going to work out for me. When did you know, hey, I wanted to be a baseball player and then realize, okay, I could actually achieve this professionally? Uh, well, my sophomore year of high school, uh, my parents sat me down and told me I had to choose between baseball and tennis because I had uh, college offers for both sports. And um, so I chose – actually, initially I chose, chose tennis. Wow. Yeah, but uh, about a week later I, I started uh, regretting it and went back to baseball and then uh, – you know, the draft came along, and and looks like I made the right choice. I know a player that's up and coming in tennis by the name of Noah Rubin. I actually grew up with him, and he was smashing tennis balls around at the age of two. So who's your favorite tennis player? I'm a big Nadal fan. I'm uh, a Federer guy, so we may okay. not agree. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> as Dante Pichette Jr. joins us right now on the Zach Yelp Show. So besides your father, just growing up as a kid, who was the role model that you looked at in the game of baseball? Uh, you know, as far as, as how they played the game um, and the and the flair that they had was Manny Ramirez was a big one for me. I loved watching. Uh, you know, I actually played with my dad um, in Boston, so got to see him a couple times and just, you know, he's a funny guy. He, he dropped bombs and he had a lot of, you know, swag and flair, and, and I love that. So he was definitely one of my favorites. Manny being Manny, they'd always say that, and sometimes he would disappear behind the green monster uh, during games. But uh, – Let's get to your brother, too. Your, your brother's having some season, man, let me tell you. Yeah, it was awesome. He, uh, you know, d leading up to the draft, he was doing all the same workouts I did, going through everything. And then, um, you know, the draft night, uh, he fell a little further than he thought. And, 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 you know, we were freaking out a little bit. And then all of a sudden the Blue Jays came around. And that's honestly where he wanted to go. And we prayed about it. And, and that's what we thought was the best fit for him. And, um, you know, it couldn't have worked out any better. And then him for him to go out and, and have the start to his career that he had is, is awesome. How competitive were you and your brother growing up? Extremely, man. You know, uh, we were always, you know, every sport that we played, we all played the same sport, and we always played together. So always pushing each other and still pushing each other, man. He's he's really talented and really good. And uh, when we get back home this off season, we'll just make each other better by doing things together. And you know siblings, they fight over stupid things all the time. Give me something that you and your brother once fought over through a competition that you just look back and say, "Wow, how immature were we?" Uh, it was always it was always just going out to hit with with pops and and uh, seeing who could you know win the hitting contest, whatever we were playing, home runs or base hits, or whatever we were doing. And uh, if it wasn't that, it was tennis. If it wasn't that, it was football. Whatever it was, man. Video games. That that's the biggest one is video games. But um, what type of video games do you play? It's MLB The Show, which he's, he smacks me at that game. Slugfest growing up as a kid, right? Not so much Slugfest, man. It was just The Show, and then uh, it was Madden. And oh, I, I love I've Madden. I think i Madden. I'm better than him. Madden, but, <laughs> yeah. I love the look that you gave me. You, you looked at me, you go, yeah, I'm, I'm 100% better than him in Madden. <laughs> yeah, he might have me in The Show, but I got him in Madden. As Dante Bichette Jr. joins us. So you had a big night on Monday, um, but how would you evaluate your season so far individually? You know, I think it's um, Monday kind of kind of – really helped it out um got my seventh homer i think it was it's a lot better than four um and so i had a really good road trip to kind of it was it was you know good to finish strong for sure on the road um uh, i think that uh you know defense went well and, and helping the team win went is going really well and it's it's kind of showing up you know uh our team is really good and uh it's it's totally a, a you know this this team isn't just a one man you know one man show at all you know i mean we one through nine we, we really compete and the pitchers are awesome and they're doing a great job and uh i think you know it's definitely a team effort out there and, and just judging by your character so far just talking to you briefly you're not someone that gets complacent even though the team right now 
is at an 85 and 53 record. I always feel like from you there's room for improvement. So where do you have to improve on your game when you evaluate yourself? Uh, me individually? Yes. Uh, as a, if you want to be, you know, a top-tier athlete, you really got to improve on every single aspect of the game. You can't just choose a single one, you know. Um, I guess you start with your, your weaknesses. Um, it, honestly, at this level, there's everybody's pretty good at everything they do. You know, there's there's no glaring weakness in any player um, at this level. But, um, you know, you just got to kind, kind of stay strong, get stronger. Um, and keep getting all around better every single day is all you can really do. And the big league club, they made a lot of moves at the deadline, and now you're seeing so much youth in this organization. And you've seen so many players that were even in Trenton this year that are now on the big league roster. And this is a team with the Yankees. The standard is always high, but now you're going to start to see over the years players develop here in Trenton, then go up to AAA, and then make their way to the top of the big leagues. As a player that's involved in it right now, do you feel that infusion of youth and how bright of a future this organization has? You know, uh, since I've been here, so since 2011, we've been saying, man, we could be really special up there, you know, because we, we know the kind of players that we've got coming up, and, um, you know, they, they've had good players up at the top, and it seems like they're making a bit of a transformation now. Um, and, of course, we want to see that. You know, it only is, it only is better for us, but uh, we also think it would be better for them too. Um, we definitely believe in ourselves. There's a whole, you know, group of guys we all talk, and, uh, and we definitely believe in ourselves. And, and you see it happening in different organizations and it working out for some of them. I mean, the Royals are a prime example. And then, uh, you know, if, if the Yankees are, are kind of following suit, it could be, could be cool. I know you always rooted for your dad growing up, but did you have one team that you rooted for growing up as a kid? I don't know if I can answer that question. <laughs> oh, why? Because uh, it's not Boston? Where, hey, I'm not answering that question. <laughs> Can't answer that one. See, we had the play-by-play guy, Adam, on. He's a Boston fan as well. <laughs> you grew up as a Boston fan, so there you go. But, hey, you got to change now. It's a business now. you got to now give everything to the New York Yankees. Absolutely. And that's what you're going to be doing for a very long time in this organization. So you had Alex Rodriguez here in Trenton this mm-hmm. year for a little bit. What was that like? It's awesome, man. I, I actually, uh, he came when we were in Charleston, I think, two or three years ago, and um, he got to spend a couple of days with us there, too, and he just, you know, got to give us some words of wisdom, and we got to see how he went about his work, and uh, it's not a bad guy to, to watch, you know, go through his day, so uh, it was really, really impressive and really awesome, kind of just something you'll never forget. So you've had these conversations with so many people just because of your father's play and now you know you have someone to relate to with your brother as well and there's so many connections what's some of the best baseball advice you've ever received the best baseball advice i've ever received i'd say um it comes from a combination of my mom and my dad definitely uh be the same person every day uh regardless of the outcome and be yourself be yourself has to be the number one advice that i've ever gotten because in this game a lot of a lot of different voices are coming at you and a lot of different opinions about you are coming at you and you and you kind of you can't fall you know prey to to what people think or what people tell you to do you got to know who you are and and uh and be the best that that you are not you know not anybody else what do you want to prove this series because you're going to play these guys next week again what do you want to prove in this series you know it's it's kind of funny situation because we already know who's playing the playoffs, and you know what I mean. It's, it's just a matter of where we're playing, and um, you just got to prove that that you compete with them. You know what I mean? And um, they've got some masters on that team, and uh, we can really play. So it's it's kind of you know it's going to be a battle for sure. Um, you'd love to just go out there and and show them what you got. We'll see what happens. I mean, I, I doubt any either team will be swayed mentally either you know one way or the other at the end of the series we're we're just kind of both in the same situation right now but go out there and give them what we got now before we let you run as Dante Bichette Jr. joins us and I know you have to run because you do have a big series coming up uh, to say the least I asked uh, Reese Hoskins this question Uh, just tell me one thing that the average listener would not know about Dante Bichette Jr. man (laughs) Adam's looking at me right now because he knows a little more than, <laughs> than normal people. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I guess really into music, really into the Hunger Games. Okay. Uh, Who's yeah. your favorite artist for, for musician? Uh, musicians. I, I like D.A. Antwerp. It's, okay. It's uh, South African rap Zef music.
What's your walk-up song? Is, it, is that them? Uh, no, right now it's Baby Boy to Prince. Uh, okay. Live, but, you know, this baseball, it's, it's different than just chilling and listening to music for sure. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. I wish you the best of luck this weekend and the best of luck in your career. And uh, let's stay in touch. Thanks for a few minutes. Appreciate it, man.